Yo, what's going on guys? Crispy Flakes here. For today's video, we're going to go through how to trade every NBA team's worst contract. So this is an article by Zach Buckley of Bleach Report. Uh, kind of how I'm going to handle this is I'm actually going to kind of say more so if it even makes sense for a team to take on a certain team's, uh, you know, worst contract out there, man. Because, you know, chances are if it's a bad contract, that's because the player is just like not a very good player. Or maybe they're even like an okay player, but they're injury prone or just don't play up to the dollar signs that they are playing for every single night, guys. So yeah, if you guys are enjoying this type of video, be sure to drop a like on this one. Remember, it only takes a second of your time. And really does help the channel out so much if you want to read more in depth uh, the link to the articles are always in the description of the video so here we go we have the Atlanta Hawks uh trading Miles Plumlee to the Detroit Pistons and I'm pretty sure kind of what they're getting at here is that uh the reason the Pistons would do this is because like Miles Plumlee would be more of a veteran oriented center to have on the team over you know like Thon Maker but my argument there is that the Pistons already have Zaza Pachulia uh, and not to mention, man, Miles Plumlee played like 12 games last season. He averaged like th like three or four points and like two rebounds. I mean, Thon Maker's giving you like at least five points and three rebounds. Yeah, it's not much better, but also Thon Maker's on a bitch ass contract. So yeah, this one to me uh, makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. I think they, I think this dude got his Plumleys mixed up. Uh, next up, we have Gordon Hayward to the Grizzlies. So for the Grizzlies to do this. I definitely think they would also need a first round draft pick and that's not because Gordon Hayward's like a bad player but he is getting paid like 31 million dollars the team uh, the Grizzlies are in rebuild mode and not to mention man the Grizzlies have like a history of taking on injury prone uh, small forwards or at least small forwards that come to the team and they get injured so guys like Chandler Parsons uh, Kyle Anderson and you know if they go to get uh, Gordon Hayward he would definitely continue with that trend so it's not a bad idea because, you know, in a rebuilding situation, at least Gordon Hayward gets to, like, try to return to form, and he'll be, like, a number one, number two guy on the team. Plus, if they decide to keep Mike Conley, it's like all of a sudden you got something interesting going on there. Uh, combine that, you know, obviously, too, with the second pick in the 2019 NBA draft. Uh, next, we have the Brooklyn Nets trading Allen Crabb to the Cavaliers. Uh, same song and dance where the Cavaliers would probably need a draft pick to do this. But at the same time, you can almost argue that the Brooklyn Nets should not be trading draft picks anymore. Like, okay, we got past that era draft your players it's all good um but at the same time you know if the Brooklyn Nets were to trade Alan Carab away that would free up like 19 million dollars which they could use on a player going into this free agency right uh plus Alan Crabb is not like a bad scorer so if he would he would definitely get a rotation spot on the Cavaliers and you know would try to uh prove himself yet again before going to the next contract hopefully not worth you know 20 million dollars a season or whatever it was uh next we have Nicholas Batum to the Pistons so yeah Batum has definitely not been like a great player since his Portland Trailblazer days. Uh, got that ridiculous contract on the Charlotte Hornets. Now for him to go to the Pistons, it actually makes a little bit of sense because, uh, you know, the Pistons already do not really have a lot of cap space as is. So the fact is, and, and not to mention like Detroit's not always the greatest free agent destination. So uh, what the team needs though, is just like some okay wings. They, they, they just need, they, they don't need like no superstar out there. They already got their start play with Blake Griffin. They got Andre Drummond. Reggie Jackson was nice last year. I played all 82 games. Uh, now just fill out the rest of the spots. And I think with Nicholas Batum, you know, kind of on like that fourth or fifth role um, option of the team, he might actually benefit from that. I, I don't hate the move in this circumstance, even though it's a lot of money, you know, being paid forward. Uh, next up, we have Cristiano Felicio to the Grizzlies. I mean, not going to lie, man. Uh, I have no idea <laughs> about this guy at all. Like, I know he exists. But uh, I, I guess maybe it just gives him a chance to play is really the best way you can look at that. Uh, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers, Kevin Love to the Jazz. Yes, I do like this one a lot just because, like, Kevin Love, I still think could, hap could uh, help out a team looking to contend. And what better player to pull alongside Rudy Gobert than Kevin Love? Not to mention he has championship experience. Uh, on the other side of things, it's like he's not doing much for the Cleveland Cavaliers. So I'm sure, you know, they can kind of like work around like a trade for like a Derek Favors or somebody like that, which would definitely make the uh, Cleveland Cavaliers happy just to get Kevin Love's contract off their books and maybe get a younger player out of it or even a draft pick. Not, not a bad mood. move. <laughs> uh, next up, we have Tim Hardaway Jr. to the Hornets. So, uh, yeah, Tim Hardaway is getting paid quite a bit of money. Um, I still don't mind him beyond the Dallas Mavericks. Like, I still feel like that could be like a decent, you know, fit just offensively. Um, but if, if you went to the Hornets, I could actually see that being some pretty good value for the Hornets in the sense that I think he could have that same kind of like Jeremy Lamb impact where like, yeah, he's typically not a, a 19 point per game score, whatever Jeremy Lamb was, but in the right circumstances, I feel like Tim Hardaway, uh, being able to be like that second or third guy with Kemba Walker 
would definitely uh, make his contract at least seem a little bit more valuable, despite it still, you know, despite him still being overpaid. Uh, next up, we have Will Barton to the Blazers. Yes, and Will Barton, I, I believe he was actually drafted by the Blazers. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but you know, a six-six dude that can play the small forward or shooting guard spot. Uh, I've been saying it for a while now, now man. It's, it's been the same issue with the Portland Trail Blazers for a while now, and that is that you know you, get, you got the point guard, you got the shooting guard, you got the center. It's the rest of the spots that this team struggles. I feel like if they could get Will Barton on the team, um, you know, sure it's it's not the greatest contract, but we know what we'd get from him at least. As opposed to like you know Evan Turner, he was just a horrible fit. I mean, Mo Harkless has his moments, but. You know, his contract was like four years, like $44 million or something like that. And yeah, it doesn't look as bad now, but you know, it, it's just you need that guy that can step up and be like that fourth option of the team. I think Will Barton brings you a lot of different uh, things for the Portland Trail Blazers. Uh, next up, we have Reggie Jackson going to the Bulls. So I guess I don't really know why the Bulls would do this one uh, unless they just want to like go out there and draft like a Darius Garland or a Kobe, uh, a Kobe White, and just kind of like give those guys a few years, because that's the thing, man, like Reggie Jackson, I mean, playing 82 games last season, uh, he's going to give them like a beacon of consistency, like he's going to go out there and get you like 15 points, 5 assists, and I feel like for the Chicago Bulls, you know, having a veteran guy wouldn't be a bad move, while their lottery pick ends up developing, you know, into the next thing, because you definitely see that sometimes, especially playing the point guard spot at the, you know, as, as a rookie. It can be one of the most difficult things, if not the most difficult thing to do. Because, you know, the expectations are so high because you were just drafted. So, it would allow somebody kind of, like, ease themselves in the rotation. Eventually, Reggie Jackson would be gone. Or maybe even move to a bench role. Probably not that, though. Uh, next up, we have Andre Iguodala to the Raptors. I mean, Iggy's, like, 35 now. So, yeah, they keep Kawhi Leonard. Um, sure, why not? You get a nice veteran Andre Iguodala. Not much more to say about that one. Uh, next, we have Chris Paul to the Lakers. So, I actually did this in a rebuild probably a few weeks ago, man. And people were kind of hating me on me for it. And I was just kind of like, you know, you need to, like, decide if you want to go the route of the young guys with LeBron or you want to, like, like, like make LeBron happy. Because, you know, use the young guys with them. It wasn't quite working out. Go out there. Get Chris Paul. You know, have him and LeBron finish out their careers together. It's It would be kind of an interesting fit, man. Like, it's something I think we've always, you know, I know I've always wanted to see was see Chris Paul play with LeBron. So, yeah, it's a ridiculous amount of money, um, and I think this is kind of like a last resort where it's like, okay, well, we kind of struck out all the other free agents. Let's make a trade for Chris Paul. I could definitely see that happening, man. Uh, next, we have Miles Turner to the Pelicans. So, yeah, I mean, the Pacers do have Sabonis, who I think is on like a $3.3 million qualifying offer. Um, the thing is, though, is like Sabonis is going to get paid just as much as Miles Turner does eventually. I thought Miles Turner was nice for the uh, Pacers last season. I don't really see any reason why they trade him to the Pelicans unless they're just like, okay, Sabonis is going to be our guy now. But I think I like Miles Turner a bit better than Sabonis, I will say. Uh, next, we have Danilio Gallinari to the Mavericks. Yeah, I guess I'm trying to think how he fits into the team. I mean, he was a solid 20 point per game scorer last season. Uh, I think he was pretty much healthy for the most part. So, you know, you put him on the team, he would probably play the four spot. You got Chris Tops at the five. You know, of course, you got Luka Doncic out there too. Uh, yeah, not a bad look out there, man. Now, I don't I don't really know what the Clippers would need in return, but if they're going out there trying to get themselves, you know, some big-name free agents, then just getting him off the books might be worth it enough. Uh, next, we have Lonzo Ball to the uh, Bulls. So, this has been talked about a little bit. You know, people are kind of saying that Lonzo Ball would actually be, like, the perfect fit based off of the starting five um, of the Bulls right now. And, yeah, I mean, if you can go out there and get, like, the right fit, you know, for, for like, the Lakers, like, the right trade, of course you do that. I just... I don't know what that right trade is, man. Like, I can't think of a single player that the Lakers would be like, oh my God, we have to get him, unless it means giving up like a Wendell Carter, but I don't see the Bulls really doing that. So, yeah, I I don't know, man. I guess I don't really know what happens with Lonzo Ball in the future of the Lakers, but the Bulls would be a nice fit regardless. Uh, next, we have Chandler Parsons to the Heat. Yes, uh, Parsons would get to join the cast of the Heat, a.k.a. the team filled with players that are just going to, like, be some nice players. They're pretty much the new Clippers, man. Where it's just like all these really solid pieces, and you just need that superstar to insert. Uh, unfortunately, you know, taking on his contract is not going to help you get that superstar any sooner. Um, I don't really see why the Heat would totally want to do this, man. But maybe he turns out being a pretty solid player. So, yeah, uh, we have James Johnson to the Jazz. Uh, he's just a solid defensive player. Somebody put that four spot. Um, I know sometimes he's a good three-point shooter. Not always. So he might be an okay fit at the four. But he's somebody you would probably just use off the bench and just kind of help to continue being the best defensive team in the NBA like the Jazz were. 
Uh, next, we have Tony Snell to the Pistons. I mean, I don't know. I used to not be a very big Tony Snell fan, and I still don't know much about him. Man, I just, like, I, I like, I don't know. There was a while where he played for like the Bulls, and I was just like, man, this dude never makes a single shot. I don't know how he is these days. If he's a solid player, sure, I'll take him, but I want to get excited about it. Uh, next, we have Andrew Wiggins to the Hawks. Ooh, you know that's not a bad little idea because. The Hawks could definitely give up a guy like a Torian Prince. And yeah, I'm not saying Torian Prince is worth Andrew Wiggins. You probably have to do a bit more than that. But I mean, Andrew Wiggins, Trey Young, John Collins, like that's something. And then Torian gets his nice fit on the uh, Timberwolves. I mean, he's a nice defensive player. He can knock down the three-point shot. Would instantly fit into that team. So I don't hate this, man. That's uh, not, not bad at all. I mean, it would be interesting. It just, it would be interesting. Uh, Solomon Hill to the Lakers. Okay, so I think this is assuming that he's just part of an Anthony Davis trade and he's just like a Tolson player. Yeah, the Lakers would take him on just to get Anthony Davis. Nope, not much more to be said about that. Uh, Frank Nilekina to the Pelicans. Okay, yeah, the team definitely is in need for a point guard. Um, you know, I mean, at least as of right now, I guess we'll go off and see what they actually get in the draft. It's probably going to be Zion though, right? But they got Drew Holiday at the two. Um, Frank Nilekina, Drew Holiday in the backcourt. Nice defensive potential. It's not a bad fit. I don't, I don't hate it. I mean, I feel like the Phoenix Suns might also be a pretty solid choice, though, because, like, him in the backcourt, like, with Devin Booker, he's the defensive guy. Devin Booker's the offensive guy. Could also work out. Uh, we got Russell Westbrook to the Suns. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to entertain this one because I'm looking down here, and they're talking about giving, like, the sixth pick in the draft and TJ Warren, and that's not going to get you Russell Westbrook. I'm sorry. That's just, Like, if it was, like, a top two pick then we're gonna talk but no way you're no way man that's not gonna happen that's not even, not even gonna entertain that uh here we have timothy uh, mozgov to the grizzlies from the magic uh same song and dance the dude's not gonna play it's just a matter of getting some draft picks for the grizzlies to rebuild that's all i gotta say about that one uh here we got ben simmons asterisk here to the lakers so this is assuming that ben simmons does get a max contract which he will uh, so I guess they're talking about trading him to the Lakers now. I know there's been talks like trading Ben Simmons for LeBron. I mean, that's another like fairy tale fantasy right there. It would be fun to watch because like Lonzo and Ben Simmons, I don't quite know how those guys work out together. But uh, yeah, another thing that I, if, I, if there's more rumors about, it, I'll do like a rebuild for it on my channel and stuff. But uh, as of right now, man, that's just kind of a, I don't know. He, he would fit in better than LeBron. He would fit in better because he's younger and stuff. So they can uh, focus on that rebuild. Uh, here we got Tyler Johnson to the Bulls. Yeah, I mean, $19.2 million player option. Uh, he did start for the Phoenix Suns, so, I mean, he definitely has, like, that potential to be an okay starter. Now, is he better than Chris Dunn? Is, is he the guy you want at the point guard position for $19 million? Uh, probably not, so I'm going to say this is an L right here. Uh, we got Evan Turner to the Pelicans. Um, also, not a bad little one right there because the Pelicans don't really have much going on with the point guard spot right now. Evan Turner is more of a ball-dominant type of guard, which is why he doesn't really work out on the Trailblazers because, of course, they run it through Damian Lillard. So, it might be a pretty good opportunity for him to just go out there and be a guy you can run the offense through. Uh, next, we have Harrison Barnes to the Blazers. I mean, a 20-point per game score. Has championship experience from his Warrior days. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's another case where it's just like... He would just bring them some consistency at the position. They have not really had great consistency at for a very long time. Uh, here we have LaMarcus Aldridge back to the Blazers. That would actually be really cool to watch, man. I'm not even going to lie. Like, I would love to see him go back to that team and end his career there. I mean, he instantly fits in, you know, at that fourth spot alongside Nurkic. It would be pretty cool. I'll be all for that. Um, although, yeah, they would probably have to do... Yeah, it looks like they would probably have to give up Nurkic to do so. <laughs> okay. Uh, here we got Marcus Saul to the Hornets. I mean, we were all we were all about this around the trade deadline before he went to the Raptors. Like people were being like, "Yo, Charlotte, pull the trigger on this one, man." Marcus Saul, Kemba Walker, that could be something. Uh, then Mark went to the Raptors, and like he was okay. I mean, he's been like okay. Like, he's had his moments, but you know, he's definitely not playing like the Memphis Grizzlies Marcus Saul that we've all come to know and love over his NBA career. Uh, next, we have Dante Exum to the Suns. Why not? You know, take 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 a chance. Maybe you find your point guard of the future. Dante Exum was still a lottery pick. Uh, yeah, actually, what was it, man? The uh, number five pick of the 2014 NBA draft. So, sure, if you want to take a chance on the guy, I guess the Suns is probably the place to do it right now. Uh, then we have Washington Wizards, John Wall, too. This guy doesn't know. Uh, I'll let you know right now, man. I'm going to say it straight up. The Phoenix Suns. Like, I know we just talked about them. They need a point guard, though. Uh, really, the only guy they're paying big money to right now is Devin Booker, as far as I know. Uh, you know, DeAndre Ayton's going to be on his rookie deal for quite a while longer. TJ Warren has a friendly contract. It's like, you know, Josh Jackson's going to get traded. 
put together some sort of trade and just team up these two guys man i think it's a fantastic fit so yeah i'm all for that but yeah guys uh anyway hope you all enjoyed this video just some different ways to look at the contract situation but yeah man be sure to drop that like subscribe if you're new to my channel and peace out my friends